We now move to a very insightful, hopefully, and an exciting one-on-one -on -one conversation. Helming the conversation is Mr. Ruhail Amin, Senior Editor, Exchange for Media Group. Could I request Mr. Amin to join me on stage? In conversation with Mr. Amin, a journalist who I think needs no introduction, Ms. Sonia Singh, the Editorial Director for NDTV. Can we have a big round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen? There's definitely no tax on uh, sharing, so yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kartike. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sonia, for taking our time. Uh, Sonia Singh, uh, Editorial Director, NDTV needs no introduction. We'll straight away head into the conversation. Uh, so this uh, gathering is a eclectic mix of academics, uh, practical media, and students, and, and we have someone here who can address the concerns of all the three uh, stakeholders in this conversation. So, uh, straightway, uh, what we're debating is uh, how academic uh, journalism is maybe uh, losing out in the race of practical journalism. Mm -hmm. We see that in the last uh, 10 years, we have, if my figures are right, I mean, one lakh print publishing uh, publications, 400 news channels, you know. And do we see the journalism, the academic side evolving at the same rate? Are they keeping pace with the changing uh, landscape of media? Well, uh, before, I, before I answer your question directly, um, I'd like to thank Anurag, of course, for inviting me. And I was a bit wary of uh, attending this media educators because, of course, I've never been to a media school. I studied English rich literature which, as my parents told me, is a course which will never get you any job. It's a course you study for passion. And luckily, journalism is also something you study, you work in for passion, because there's no reason to work in journalism. It's not, it's not glamorous. It doesn't have the best pay. It has the worst hours. And your performance reviews depends on what the audience finally thinks of it. So journalism mm -hmm. is a profession you should only join if you're passionate about it. And then I thought that actually perhaps the one thing I do know about media education is the fact that I was lucky enough to be part of the first batch of, I think, what was the premier media education institution of our country, and that's NDTV. Because every television channel today is headed by people who are NDTV graduates. So I think that has been a wonderful uh, comment, I think, on how a television company, can, a media company, can also be a training ground. And that, I think, perhaps is a challenge that many of the media schools now have to face, that how do you actually make sure that your working ground, your classroom, is a slice of real life. Because after all, what are journalists beyond looking at reporting the stories of real life? How do you bring that real life into the classroom? And I think that is a challenge that uh, media companies and media institutions will have to look at working together. In fact, I think this kind of conversation is really important so we can bring those divides uh, much closer and look at how we can address that. So, so that blind spot, if we have to pinpoint that blind spot that is there in the academic side of it, I mean, what would that be? Is there a heavier side to the theory part of it? Is there not the kind of right technology where the media has uh, you know, already arrived? You know? Where exactly is that blind spot on the academic side? You know, I mean, we do now tend to, as I said earlier, as I said, when, when I joined journalism, we had people from very diverse backgrounds. Nobody had a journalism degree. Everybody was, whether it's English literature, we had engineering, we had very diverse backgrounds. Mm. Now we do look at media institutes. It's a plus point. Definitely there's a degree from a media institute. But what we do find is that often there's an obsession with technology, but we leave aside then the old-fashioned values of journalism. And when there's the journalism values, then there's a disconnect with technology. So we need to marry the best of old world journalism, because I think that really is something, the, uh, the role that integrity, ethics, credibility must play in a journalist is something which I find sometimes in classrooms has been taken a back seat to the issues of can you shoot your story, can you do your, can you the mobile phone properly or can you edit. So we have to marry that and I'd, we are, are getting very bright young batches or recruits but we, I think that there needs to be much closer connection between the, the com television companies or the internet companies which are hiring and the classroom. I think that has to be come together much closer. 
Right, and, and when we see students uh, aspiring to be journalists and when they look at news media, I'm specifically talking about news media, what has happened is like, as you're aware, everyone is aware that it's slightly, um, I'm sorry to use the word, slided towards entertainment and you have screaming anchors, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how, what is the responsibility on the media side when the up, uh, uh, aspiring journalist is watching a news channel and he wants to be there, he's getting trained, but he sees the idealism being stripped when he sees the real media. How do you uh, see that on the onus on your side? How do you try to address it you know, from your end? You know, I mean, I actually agree with you completely on that. And often, I mean, I actually find it now that I think this is a very difficult time for a young person to enter journalism because when I, when I see, like, for instance, uh, I think a case maybe, and uh, I don't mean to refer necessarily to any particular channel or may as well, but when I see, like, uh, maybe, like, I, I saw... Uh, a clip where I think Shashi Thru was coming out of some airport and there were 20 journalists surrounding him shouting at him. And I remember thinking if I'm a young reporter, yeah. would I think I've joined journalism to shout at him, have you murdered your wife? You wouldn't. And I do think that that way it is a television channel, that I, I mean it's not just television, it's online, but I think we are failing somewhere in our responsibility of remembering the ideals of journalism we all joined for. I do have to say that ed, all channels are headed by extremely brilliant, extremely smart people and we all joined with ideals. We shouldn't let those ideals fall by the wayside because we are all big names in business now and we think that we can dictate the political agenda. We still have to realize there is a respect, a certain uh, integrity and credibility which our words and our actions carry. In fact, even more than our words, our actions. So if we tell a young person that you go out there and you behave like this, they don't have a choice but to listen to you. So the responsibility we have is immense and I do find it extremely worrying sometimes what young journalists fresh from graduation schools are doing nowadays or are being taught to do nowadays. I agree with you that's a larger problem of the media, especially of the television media. I hope there will be a backlash. I find amongst viewers there is a backlash of people turning away from that kind of journalism. I hope that will get people to actually correct. Because beyond self-regulation, you can't. this is not something someone from outside can tell you to do. Right. It has to come with, uh, yes. uh, from within. 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 I will uh, go for two quick questions and I want to open it for the rest of them for the next five minutes. I'm showing a lot of them are nodding and they just want to ask you some questions. My first is what would be your three quick points about fixing the gap between academic side and the practical media side? Uh, three quick fixes, not quick fixes, I mean so three solutions. Well, I think actually it's one solution. I would suggest that and I know that at least NDT would be very happy to do it, that perhaps media institutions look at a two or three month internship in actual uh, newsrooms. I think that would be a wonderful addition to a course. I mean, news uh, channels are always looking for young, bright people. It would help us almost as a kind of a bridgeway to get a sense of how, what are the things we actually look for. A company, senior journalists on stories, get a sense. We have many interns coming to us because they need it for their college applications. So, mm -hmm. they, you know, they want to intern with NDTV. But I think it should actually be part of curriculum media institutions across channels to place their students for at least two or three months in actual newsrooms. I think that would be a wonderful bridge to actually get people better acquainted with what the expectations are in the real world. Right. And, and for aspiring journalists, to what three things would you tell them in the con contemporary you know, scenario to learn or unlearn, you know, to be the next the future journalist who will be relevant and taken very seriously? What would be those tips, I mean, for the students who are sitting right at the back here? Uh, well, one is don't think journalism is glamorous. It's not glamorous at all. It's, uh, it's hard work. But it's the most exhilarating, exciting... Uh, I mean, I hate the word profession because I don't think of journalism as a job or a profession. I think of it as a vocation, a passion. I think, I mean, I'm very proud of the fact that we consider uh, the fourth estate a pillar of democracy. So I think really join it as a passion and uh, don't look at anything else. Be uh, sincere, be committed, hardworking and, of course, uh, Definitely don't join it to be an anchor, as Anurag would say, because we have many young kids who will join and we'll we do the interview and they'll say, uh, and all that we find, they'll say, okay, ma'am, then when can I start anchoring? So I think that we have to <laughs> wait a little bit for, but I think it's, uh, in a way, I start off by saying that uh, there's no logical reason to be in it, but it is the best uh, vocation to be in. Yeah. So five minutes, I would take that liberty and just want to open up whoever has questions, only three questions, but quick, yes, please. If you could introduce yourself and quickly. Getting recruited by 
Oh, all right, okay, because. Of course, like, you have your own training houses, you would like to definitely uh, recruit your own graduates for your own training. Well, uh, we actually had one, but then we had, uh, we shut it down a few years ago because we did feel that there was now so many media schools, we didn't need a separate one. So we are actually very open uh, to placements, and uh, I'm not sure, I said, I, I know that uh, many others, I think, uh, Republic not also don't have their own media houses. So I think now there's so many, way, I mean, I know our online division is also always looking for people. So I think uh, that outreach, perhaps, I mean, you can mail me, you can mail our HR department, but we are always looking for fresh recruits. And often what we do like a lot is that we test that if, you know, if people are willing to work for three months as interns. I think that willingness to, and we, many of the people we've had have been young people who just badgered us that we just want to intern with NDTV because we believe in it, and then have been absorbed because we feel that if they're so passionate about being part of the channel, then these are the kind of people we want. So I think that that's one of the ways perhaps that can be addressed. Um, yes, on the uh, right side, yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a mic. Uh, you know, these days there's no uh, dearth of uh, news channels around, you know. And you keep on surfing, uh, switch from one from channel to another. But I just want, I'm very disappointed in one fact that are these uh, news channels uh, politically motivated and do they have affiliations? Sir, can we give a short one question? Yes. Yes. That's it. We'll, she'll answer it, yes. Yes. No, I, th I, look, I think the viewer is the final judge. I mean, you know, I think there, there will be, the, I mean, whether it's uh, X, Y, or Z, and I'm not pointing at any channel, and I'm sure you can say the same, I mean, people would say the same about us, but the viewer is the final judge. Credibility, our credibility is judged every day. So I think if a viewer thinks, uh, if there is a political affiliation, no viewer is silly, it will be out very soon, and it, it comes out. I don't think you can hide anything anymore in this world, whether it's of social media or television. It's, I mean, it's a badge of honor you're saying, so, so it's, I think, but you know, everybody has a remote control. The way to vote, as they say, is with... Uh, uh, we can take less of the conversation offline. There's one more question on that. Sure, side, yes. sure. Hi, I'm Bridge. I'm from Business World. Yes. Uh, so, you know, taking on from the last question, uh, do you think that, uh, you know, viewers today are foolish because we see... Uh, TRPs of some channels actually on a rise and they and they are stuffing propaganda to people. I mean, it's so out in the open, but they, they are, are also viewers, sorry. But, sorry <laughs> but then they are still, of course we are viewers, but then they are still, uh, you know, getting higher and higher TRPs. Of course, those numbers are debatable, but what is the, what is that which is, you know, t you know, fooling people and viewers? Is it the hegemony of media as a fourth pillar? See, uh, uh, Bridge, I'm not sure, I mean, uh, I don't want to say anything on TRPs because last time I made some remarks, yeah, I got into lots of trouble and a complaint after I talked about TRPs, I'm not mentioning it. But I think really we need to relook at TRPs and really have something rather than television rating with credibility rating points. I think that is what is really what should be marketable in today's industry should be credibility. That is really the gold standard, if a channel is credible or not. Often I find that should we have news systems, some of the news channels should actually be the entertainment channels and not news channels. That perhaps addresses some of the issue that perhaps, you know, you're tired of being shouted at by your wife, so you want to look at somebody else being shouted at on TV and you watch it for some reason. But let's just say that I think the current TRP system, the way it's being done, is not the ideal situation. However, I do find that I think credibility has become key. For instance, uh, recently we had uh, Nikki Haley in uh, India. And uh, Nikki Haley at that time was uh, uh, President Trump's representative at the UN. And as you know, the Americans, and I'm sure Anurag will back them, this research impact and which TV channel they go to methodically. They look at TRPs, they look at online impact, they look at what the feedback they get, and they chose NDTV as only TV channel. And if they had gone by bark ratings, there's no way they would have chosen us. But there, uh, there is an intangible which cannot be measured, which is respect, which is credibility. And I believe that even as I speak today, Twitter has signed up with us only TV channel for town halls for the three election states. These are, these are companies that thrive on research and market research. And if those companies choose us over some other channels, I think the answer on credibility and why it's important really rests there. So that's Are we doing good on time? Answer. Is there time for... I think we're doing really good on time. You know, I think we have one more question. You know, One more. Yes, please, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, are you looking at what exactly you require from Lighted Act? For example, if you are not doing it, 
फैक्ट्री मॉल की एक्टिविटी पालन की पालन का आइडिया पालन ग्रीन का Giving them the exact, basically, points where they well, can. Well, uh, sir, I think especially in Delhi University, which so many of us are graduates from, the framework should be the same as it is of any subject: in-depth knowledge. I think in-depth knowledge which is relevant to contemporary journalism, with, of course, a uh, grounding in the history of the profession, the greats of our profession, the lessons of uh, journalism. But it has to be contemporary. That's the framework. Uh, the rigor of academia must be there. I don't think journalism is easy. It is the more. we read the more of different viewpoints young students have been exposed to the better journalists they are but the academia has to be in sync with contemporary requirements as well which is often technological requirements along with the academic uh, say, rigor which is needed from any syllabus right um thank you i think we are done and thank you once Wonderful. again for your time it was Not lovely talking to you can we have a huge thank round of applause much. thank you Thank you Ms Singh. I request you to stay on stage for just a minute. I'd like to call upon Mr Sagar Koshik, co-founder of Pleasant Stride Foundation, Pleasant Stride Foundation, I beg your pardon, to please come on stage and felicitate our speaker. Round of applause please. Yes.